Modern Naval Battles Global Warfare by DVG. Uh, this is a game that I had around the house because a copy was left after my kickstart and I thought, well, this looks interesting. Um, I like DVG games, so I'll give it a shot. So, uh, today we talk about Modern Naval Battles Global Warfare, which is the re-implementation slash deluxe version of of an earlier version of Modern Naval Battles. It is a card game, each player will control a fleet from one of the available nationalities, Japan, American, UK, then you have uh, Russia, you have Argentina, Taiwan, many of such fleets. And um, ships forming your fleet are represented by cards. So cards have a value printed here in the bottom right corner of the card. Um, that actually applies only to ships and to submarines, not to action cards. In any case, these cards have a value which you use when you're building your fleet. In a standard scenario, you have 25 points to build your fleet. You may choose to play with less points, especially against a certain fleet that do not have many cards. Scenarios may instruct you to use a different amount, but 25 is the standard amount of points that you use to build your ship. You will have ships that you place in up to three rows, and you may also have submarines that you do not really place in any other rows. They stay aside, and they may be in one or two positions, active or you turn them by 180 degrees, inactive, and they have different values depending on their active, inactive situation. Action cards, big deck of action cards, each player has a hand of seven cards, each player gets a full hand at the beginning of the game, and the number of cards in a player's hand may be modified by some of the ships that may have, uh, they may give advantages, may give extra cards, a closer look at the ships. Ships have symbols at the bottom that indicate the type of attacks that they can perform. As I said, they have this value here. The number printed in the top right corner is the number of life points, well, hull points. That is, uh, when you inflict an amount of damage points equal to or higher than the number you sink that ship. Some ships may also have defensive capabilities, which have this different symbol here. And there may be other symbols that indicate special abilities, such as evasive abilities, airstrikes, things like that. And then action cards. Oh, well, there are so many of them. I think it is better if I tell you about them as I describe turn structure. First, the active player will have an actions phase during which he can do things such as reinforcing. He can play cards uh, from your hand, from his hand, into the discard pile to bring in new ships from his reinforcement pile, which is uh, ship cards that belong to the fleet that he's been used and that have not been selected at the beginning. All action cards have a numerical value in this area. That means that all action cards can be used to reinforce your fleet. Then you can choose to reorganize your fleet. You can move your ships around any way you want in one, two, or three rows. You cannot have empty rows. If a row is empty, then you simply slide the rows behind it forward to uh, fill that row. And then you play cards to attack your opponents. So yeah, this is a very attack based game. When you are playing attack cards, you will look at the, at the symbol on the cards that you're using to attack. A lot of Intel cards here. At the symbol of cards that you're using to attack, and cards that you're using to attack usually have such symbols here, and you match them with uh, uh, your ships. That is, uh, that card indicates the action that the ship is performing. For example, gun combat, this ship has gun combat, I can use this ship to play this card. And you can do, for example, well, you can place it there to indicate that that is 
the ship that is firing and then you assign the attack to an enemy ship or maybe you simply turn your card a little bit just to indicate that that ship has acted already has committed to an action and then you assign the attack to a card of the opponent which is in range here you have range as you can see weapons can attack opponents between one and four range levels and those are rows of distance for example this gun combat can only uh, attack a, a, an enemy ship at one range at one row of distance that is from the first row it can attack another row suppose that you have a weapon that can attack up to two rows away you could use a ship in your first row to attack this row or that row or you could use a ship in your own second row to go one two and attack an enemy ship in the first row so when you're counting range you also count the rows of your own fleet not just the rows of the opponent's fleet so let's say that I use this attack originating from this ship against that enemy ship. Missile combat. I will use this missile combat icon to perform this missile combat. Up to two away. Boom. I assign it to that target. And I use my submarine, which has a torpedo icon to attack, say, this one. You may also have air support cards in your hand and air support cards can be used to perform air strikes. That icon there, uh, they can also be used to attack submarines or you can keep them in your hand for their defensive capability. Suppose that I want to use an air strike to attack then I launch the attack against that enemy ship there. After all attacks have been assigned, the player or players that have attacks assigned against them get a chance to defend. Yes, the defender always gets a chance to respond before the declared attacks are actually resolved. The defender looks at his hand and oops, looks at his hand of cards and can play defensive cards, cards with a defensive capability to stop enemy attacks. And you can play as many defensive cards as you want and you do not have to have any matching icon to play a defensive card. Also there may be uh, ships that have automatically automatic built in defensive capabilities. For example, probably assigning an airstrike against that ship is not the smartest thing because that ship actually has an icon that allows that ship to defend against airstrikes. For example, in this case, uh, we have a defensive icon with a number, with a value 6. When you're defending against an enemy attack, you roll a d6, and if you roll uh, the indicated number higher, you annul the attack against you. I roll, and I roll a 6, then I cancel that airstrike. If the attack, if an airstrike is not cancelled, then the player that has played the airstrike rolls a die and if the player rolls that number higher, it destroys an enemy ship. Airstrikes are a little unreliable, but they can be very powerful because they can destroy a ship in a single attack. Suppose that I have rolled five or more, boom, that ship is gone. Other types of combat, uh, the defense works in a similar way. If you have icons that allow you to defend against a certain type of attack, you roll a die to see if you're able to uh, defend against that attack. If you do not have icons, then you can still play cards to defend against that attack. For example, here we have a missile attack. Well, I play this card here from my hand to stop that missile and I played for this area here, whereas my opponent has played it well for this area pretty much uh, for range and for this number, which is the number of damage points that are inflicted. In any case, I'm playing a card to defend against this attack. I play this card that says that against that type of attack, I need to roll four or more. So I'm playing this card to defend against this one. I roll four or more, then the attack is cancelled. If I did not have a card to defend, or if I did not roll enough to defend, then the attack inflicts this amount of damage point against the enemy ship. This ship has three 
points then this attack sinks that ship suppose that the attack was not enough to destroy the ship suppose that, for example it was just this attack then if it's two points of damage on a ship that can take three points of damage then you put the card that you used to attack under the card that you targeted and that card becomes a damage card and is simply used to record the uh, the attack, well, the damage that your attack inflicted. So this is really the main, uh, the main turn sequence. You rearrange your fleet, you declare attacks, the defender gets to respond to those attacks, those that have not been uh, annulled are resolved and sometimes they are automatic, uh, for example that gun combat, not that missile combat that I showed you, and sometimes you have to roll to resolve an attack. Ships of the enemy may take damage, may be sunk, at the end of your turn you get to discard as many cards as you want from your hand and to draw up to your full hand and the opponents still get to refill their hand in case they have less cards in their hand there than maximum hand size. So lucky enough you do not have to wait until it is your turn in case of a multiple player game before you refill your hand, before you refill your... Uh, before you replenish your defensive capabilities. There are many other cards that have special effects, battle plans, they give a modifier, Two dice that are rolled. Near Miss is a card that doesn't have attack capabilities, but it is very really good for defending against pretty much anything. Bomber Strike, it allows you to perform four air strikes, but you need to spend two cards to do so. Some attacks may be particularly hard to stop, for example this one, when you're rolling a defensive capability against this attack you have a penalty of minus two. Just many effects that give more flavor to the game that make things more interesting and unpredictable. Modern Naval Battles Global Warfare may not be one of the strongest titles in the DVG catalogs, certainly it is not a masterpiece like Corner Leader Carrier Air Operations or Thunderbolt Apache Leader or it is not a beauty like a Phantom Leader Deluxe, but it is good. It is a good light card game with a war theme and actually with enough decisions to give me at least a sense that it was indeed a game about war, not just a card game about managing your hand and managing your resources and then there are ships you know, drawn on the cards, there are pictures of ships on the card. Well, no, I found that the choosing how to maneuver your ships uh, and, and to decide which ships should be exposed to more risk by going in the first row where there are more types of attacks that can get at you, especially gun combat, uh, which ships are you going to expose to danger that way, but also by doing that you can uh, give them more power to attack. Uh, choosing which cards uh, to use to attack and which of those cards that can be used for attack or defense to save, to save later for for other effects, well for defense for example, um, plus all of the other effects that will modify things around. I just found that these elements come together in a situation that is indeed pretty exciting, uh, that is indeed fun to play and just have challenges and has challenges and decisions. Not huge ones, not the deepest ones that you will have, but enough to keep you entertained for the length of the game, which is pretty short, an hour or so. Uh, yes, there is a luck factor, and if you don't get the cards that you need, you do not get the cards that you need. You have a little bit of of um, of maneuverability there, um, there's some room for maneuver there, because you can discard cards that are useless to you. You get to refill your hand every time that somebody attacks you and brings your hand of cards um, under seven which is actually good, that means that the more you get attacked, the more chances you have to go through the deck and to get cards that maybe you don't even need exactly for defense, but it will be useful to have in your hand next time that you become the active player. So in conclusion, Modern Naval Battles Global Warfare, um, 
for a light game, yes, with luck, but not such that it becomes a deal breaker. For a game that is easy to teach, fast to play, um, I find this to be a good one. One that definitely I enjoy playing and one that I think deserves more love and a little more recognition.